SB220. Eugene says, man, I got an SB220 that's sick. I'm going to send it to the doctor. Now, believe it or not, this thing had about $900 worth of damage to it when it showed up. This panel was all bent. This corner was bent. This corner was bent. This corner was bent. This corner was bent. This whole panel was bent. You look in here real close, you can see a little little whipple here but I was able to get the rest of this beaten out I've got the floor beat back up on it now and the meter this is a brand new meter by the way brand new like newer than new as in like new old stock I was able to find a gentleman that had a couple of these and it's got a brand new meter to it and uh, <clears throat> Eugene you'll notice something really cool bud everything's working now uh, if this thing was working I don't know how uh, there was a lot of different things that were disconnected or the wires are broken on it um, the primary thing that was wrong with it was the high voltage capacitor bank had four electrolytics in it that had drained dried out split and shorted and then I had to rebuild, rebuild half the high bolt board, half the diodes were out on it. So we got that all fixed up. And then it was just the game of getting the whole front end to work again, your relative power to work, your grid to work. Got all that fixed and rewired up. New sensitivity knob. Um, new on off switch. And uh, yeah, every single thing that came off that high volt board or down to that metering board, I had to either rebuild, reconnect, rehook up. Um, your zener was hooked up backwards for your zero signal, which can controls the flop on the tubes. That was hooked up completely backwards, the zener that's down in here. And um, yeah, pretty much every wire coming off that board was broken. So I got all that working. And then the other thing is, is uh, I know you're a 10 meter guy, 11 meter guy. So this is now zeroed for the middle of the 11 meter band. But I went through and I took the time and aligned it on 80, 40, 20, and 15 also. So if you want to sell this in the future, it does work on all bands. The other thing is the tune knob, the tune fins um, are a little chooched. On, on that side of the fins. So I uh, was able to get in there by removing the side and got the fins all straightened out so they're no longer rubbing and I got all the scorch marks off of them and got the corners of them all cleaned up. Now I want you to look at where I got this set Eugene. Pointed right at the 10 meter right between the 10 and the 11 and this is set right at the 5. Okay. What are you doing buddy? Dad's working shooting a video. I can't play. Puppy's over here making noise. You're going to want to index this here. Because I found that there's another resonance spot where it's indexed over here. And it's arcing in that index spot. So you want to have it arced right here for 11 meters. And it won't arc. And the same thing goes here. You're going to be around between the 4 and the, just a hair over the 5. Today we're going to use the Bench 2 pill, and uh, oh yeah, grounded the grids on this thing, and oh yeah, I couldn't help but notice, you see that big copper strap that's down in there, this one here, that was completely broke off and free, 
but uh, built you a whole new capacitor bank. Well, I took the whole capacitor bank apart. There's three, three, no, four, three, four. Four original electrolytics still in this thing. Four new ones to this box, and I took them all apart, tested the whole thing, put the whole mess back together. And then I set the resistors off away from the plastic because those sandstones that are aftermarkets that are in there are getting pretty hot. And then I had to redo a bunch of old solder work on the back of the high volt board. A little sticky and icky on the back, back side of that. A bunch of stuff broken off from back in time. But uh, at the end of the day, you got your low tap working again. High tap working. And we're back on 220. Um, when I talked to you earlier, I was telling you I put 90 watts in it and got 1,000 out. When I hit that 90 watts in, 1,000 watt mark out, and I'm talking PEP numbers, you guys. Everything today is going to be in PEP. Um, I know that I got everything set right. And because I haven't purchased a 220 volt, 25 amp Variac yet, which I found a guy here locally that's got one, I'm going to try and work a deal with him. But Man, I just have a hard time coming off $700 for a Variac. I, phew, man. So anyhow, I wired it for 110, had it running on a Variac, and I hit the 90 watt mark in, 1000 watt out, and I was like, sweet. Um, I put this thing together once, stepped on the pedal, and as soon as I'd step on the pedal, it was pulling like two amps worth of current. Hey, lay down. Lay down. I'm going to finish this video and I'll take you out. I, I see you gotta go pee. Just hold on. Pinch. Pinch it. Ten year old little three year old kid running around this around the, the friggin' store holding onto his wang. Pinch it, you'll be okay. Having a puppy's like having a little baby. Okay, so <clears throat> all that aside. End of the day. Oh, spend some time with it and guess what? It's gonna come back to you working one hundred percent now. So, we're going to go over here. That's a 1,000 watt slug in PEP and 1X. It's a 5KW slug in uh, average mode, 5 watt slug in reverse. We're going to use the RCI 2950, the bench 2 pill, and a 5 watt slug in reverse. We're going to bypass the 2 pill. I'm going to shut it off. So, step on the pedal. Hello. 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 Now your input tune is really that good. That's the key, by the way, you guys. Not mono banding the fuck out of these boxes and butchering the band switches and all that stuff. Is if you get the input tune down really, really low, um, your output wattage goes way, way up. Now I know in the book, I know in the book, they say no more than 100 watts, but they are talking about average power. No more than 100 watts average drive. So we're going to put 200 watts, 220 watts of peak power in this thing today. We will generate in excess of 2200 to 2500 watts PEP power. We're going to go into the bird 10,000 watt dummy load and let's get on with the show. So we're in the 1x position to show you guys drive. So I can do this and not electrocute myself. But do shock myself, baby, I love you. Hello. 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 220, 250 watts of drive. Okay, we're going to start out on low. Of course, we're just going to go ahead and flip this up to the 2x to save ourselves some time. So let's put this in the step on the pedal. Hello. Hello. That's 2,000 watts of peak power and we are on low mode. Let's hit the Energizer Bunny. We're now at 2,800, 2,900 volts on the plate. Hello in the corner. Hello in the corner. All right. Take that down to 5x. As we all know, the 1,000 is 10, 2,000 is 20, 3,000 is 30, 4,000 is the 40, and the 50. We're looking at that center scale, you guys. 
รู้รู้รู้บีบีไอบีบีไอบีบีไอรู้ about 2400 to 2500 watts PEP power. And that's not us overdriving it. This amp will run there forever like this if you notice the tubes aren't getting cherry red. <sighs> They're just sitting there running. Now let's see if I sit here and I tweak with it for a second. Let's see if we can get her to do a little bit more. But That 2500 is all we're going to get out of it with 200 watts of drive. But then again, I want to show you the difference between 200 watts of drive and 400 watts of drive. So we're going to take our mic gain. Remember, these are my tubes. These are my bench tubes. It's the only thing these ever get used for is testing. And they're tailors. I mean, they're RF part seconds, but yeah, let's hit it and quit it. Makes harmonica like crazy. See, to increase that drive over 200 watts does not get you a whole lot more performance, and it's not really worth it. We spent a lot of time looking at that peak kit. Let's turn on a bird peak kit with a 5,000 watt slug in it. Look eerily similar, don't they? It is what it is. That's it, man. We got it to do what you needed it to do and make it do what it should do before it leaves here. I'm going to put the lid on it. I'm going to put the body armor back on it. And brother, it will be on its way home tomorrow. Just like that. I appreciate you sending this out and giving me the opportunity to take a quick look at it. And uh, you can get, get back to giving your locals hell. <laughs> Gentlemen, my name is BBI. Without a shadow of a doubt, I am the biggest mud duck in Idaho. <coughs> Please come check us out www.bbiamps.com. You can find me on Facebook, Luke Miller BBI Amps. That's Luke Miller, then parentheses, BBI Amplifiers. And there's like three of us on Facebook, you guys. Some jackhole dick wagon out there decided back in the day that he would create a profile like mine. And uh, has got me blocked, so I can't report him. So you'll know when you get the right one. I'm the one that's got like 7,000 friends. <laughs> Anyhow. I appreciate y'all. Um, I'm going to try and do at least two amps a day for the next week to get as much stuff out of here as I possibly can before the moratorium of the no ship deal for the middle of December. Um, that is coming up here just in 10 days. And I do that every year to protect your equipment like this heavy stuff here. The brown box kickers give zero fucks. Well, they give less than zero fucks. And they will beat the holy brakes off your equipment. So I found it's much easier on you, me, and everybody involved if I don't actually bother shipping anything until about the 10th of next month. We have a lot less issues, a lot less claims. Yeah, a lot less problems. And I'm not stuck doing the work twice. That's the main thing. Anyhow, gentlemen, appreciate your all support. I'll see you.